Hey, I just wanted to bring it in and look over this page view again. Um, there is a, an incredible amount of things you can do in the page view. Um, the last time we showed you a onboarding carousel, um, just inputting images in there and allowing a user to swipe through uh, to see the different features of an app. In this view, uh, we'll actually switch it up. We will not use images. We'll have a vertical scroll with some custom content in the middle. Um, and we'll make this super cool little pricing page. Um, this took me a total of eight minutes to build. Hope you guys enjoy uh, this little tutorial. Thanks. All right, first thing we're gonna do is create a new page. Um, let's do onboarding two, uh, give it a name. Onboarding two and create blank. And what we're gonna do is again uh, drag over column. What I'm doing here is Command F to find a widget in the left sidebar, and then dragging them over to the middle. So we do column row, and then page view. Put that page view in the row. We're gonna edit this out a little bit. Um, we're gonna get rid of the safe area of the page. That way we can span the entirety of the page. Um, we're gonna change that. Uh, the scroll action for the page view to vertical and then we're going to just uh, mix up the indicator position to the top left uh, just to match our designs which uh, as you saw in the small video at the beginning um, they're going to be in the top left so we're going to do this with the alignment sliders uh, you can also just enter the values here if you want if you don't want to use the sliders then we're going to edit the design and the look and feel of the indicators themselves. Uh, we'll just do secondary there. Now we're going to change it a little bit later. But all right, let's uh, mess with the container. What we're going to do here is we're going to actually select the page view and put the height to a percentage and just make it 100%. And we're going to actually get rid of this image. You can place anything you want into this page view. So we're actually going to drag a container on there and then a column and a row, just like that. And for this column, uh, let's go ahead and make sure it's selected. Uh, we're gonna do center and then center. This will just align our content in the middle of the column rather than at the beginning or the start. So let's go ahead and grab the background color we need for this. Uh, make sure the container selected and uh, let's, let's enter that value there and then let's just press enter. Um, when you enter, for some reason in Floodflow, when you uh, enter a custom value, you just need to press enter uh, for it to sort of capture that value. Um, it's a bug that's being fixed. Um, let's go ahead and make our spacing correct. Let's add some text here. We're going to do that pro plan and then the pricing. Let's do enterprise plan here to match our design. And then let's just go ahead and copy that row. Boom, very easy. Um, when you copy a row, basically what you're gonna wanna do is select the row itself and then make sure that you're in the parent of that row, which in this case is the column, and then you can paste it in there. You can't paste a row within a row, um, but you can paste a child within a parent. So um, that's how, it's very beneficial. And I, I use copy and paste a lot um, in my designs in Flutterflow. So a lot of this, is, these are just all text, really. Um, we're gonna drag a button over here and give it a custom design. Um, you can also you can use a component here. Um, we're working on hooking up components to where they can receive actions. Um, but for now, we'll just set the stylization of this button to match our design. I'm gonna do 160, uh, make sure it's Eight, eight pixel border radius, that's what it is in the design. And then uh, select plan, I think, is the verbiage we use. Um, let's go ahead and give it a little more padding on the top. Yeah, that's about right. All right, now let's go grab our text. This could be anything. I'm just gonna copy and I'm gonna paste it right into this. And boom, uh, stylization, not that bad, actually. Um, we're gonna decrease the size of the text font over the text um, yeah that, that looks a little better and then let's add some maybe
maybe some padding to the top. Uh, make sure it's aligned left. Seems that it is uh, tabbed over a little bit. We'll just leave it as is for now, for the sake of this demo. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. Actually copying the column itself and then I'm gonna to go to the page view so I can get to the second page and it shows an image as a placeholder just remove that and then I pasted that column in there but actually I want a background so let's put it let's put a container there and then let's paste it cool let's set the background color that was white excellent we'll change the color of our header one and then we'll change this to a black button design okay yeah well let's make sure that indicator is the proper color let's go to the widget tree make sure page view so we can get those styles I actually uh, forgot to press enter, so that color didn't didn't go. Um, but we'll take care of it later on in the demo. Let's adjust our indicator stylization. Let's go to page three. And actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to copy that entire container in the page two. Um, so from the container down. Grab that, copy it, boom, we should have a container, I'm going to grab this hash, or this hex code, uh oh, my container didn't copy, so what we're going to do is, well, we're actually just select the column and select wrap, and let's wrap it in a container, that gives us what we need, and then let's go ahead and copy that color in there. Let's change the text slightly. There you go. For the purpose of this demo, I'm not going to be too specific on the hex codes of what the text is in the design. Boom. Now we got that. Cool. Let's save the project. 